Hi there, my name is Matt, and I'm a second year med student, getting ready to take the board soon. And uh, obviously, <laughs> trying to think of uh, creative ways to uh, learn this material <laughs> for the uh, for the boards, and especially uh, creative ways to uh, keep track of more esoteric stuff. Uh, and so uh, this video is going to cover lysosomal storage diseases. Uh, I came up with uh, sort of this way of thinking about them a couple days ago, shared it with some friends, they thought it was fun and helpful. And so um, I'm trying to say that this will teach you it in 15 minutes, and then you'll never have to study it again. So um, if you want to grab a first aid or whatever the resource you're using to follow along, I think that'd be helpful. And um, I guess I should preface this with saying these are going to be sort of pictures, mostly pictures, uh, and with a couple of mnemonic phrases. And um, you know, I tried to pick since these are sort of child presenting. Diseases, uh, sort of childhood figures that you, I think everyone is familiar with, uh, at least um, somewhat. So uh, let's just jump right in. Um, I'm going to start with Gauchers, Gauchers, I don't know how you pronounce this thing, but the point is I call it Gauchers, and uh, it sounds like Grouch. So the childhood figure we're going to be using for uh, Gauchers is Grouch, Oscar the Grouch, uh, Grouchers. Uh, and why is that? I will show you. So, um, this is pretty low tech, but this is my version of Oscar the Grouch. Uh, take note that uh, whenever he was seen in the show, he was always kind of presented in a trash can with his either's head or at least head and upper extremity shown. So why do uh, why use Oscar the Grouch? Well, um, Oscar is green, and I know it's not technically jaundice to be uh, that green, but uh, if you're thinking greenish, yellow. Um, why is that? Well, for gouchers, you want to be thinking liver, and you want to think hepatomegaly, hepatosplenomegaly, sorry, uh, hepatosplenomegaly, and, um, and so that's at least one presenting symptom, and then uh, if he's in the trash can, you don't really see his legs, and, and why is that? Well, it's because he has, oh, he has uh, a aseptic uh, necrosis of the femur, so uh, he's got that, plus hepatosplenomegaly, and and he's a grouch, so the histological finding is uh, on on, uh, on on histology is that uh, crumpled macrophages, crumpled paper macrophages. He's so angry, he's crumpling his paper. And you might notice something weird on his head, which I meant to be a chocolate bar, although it might kind of looks like something else now that I think about it. But anyway, uh, that's meant to be some sort of food discarded on his head. Any any kind of food will do. I I use a chocolate bar, but. Um, it's on his head. Why is it on his head? So it's on his head. Head, another word for head, cerebral, right? Cerebral. And it's on his head, sugar, something sugary, glucose, glucose. So glucose cerebrosidase is the enzyme. And, uh, uh, and also is the uh, glucose cerebroside is the buildup. So glucose cerebrosidase. And uh, you might notice in some of my other drawings, if there's something on their head, it probably has cerebral in the, in, in the enzyme or in the, at least in the, uh, in the product. So in the built-up product. So that's that's Gouchers. And um, the next one I'm going to do is uh, Crab's Disease. And I'm going to use everyone's favorite uh, cartoon crab from uh, who lives next to a certain sponge under the sea. But uh, Mr. Crab, or at least my version of Mr. Crab. Now you might be saying, oh that does not look anything like Mr. Crab and I am not an artist. I'm a med student. So anyway, uh, but I did draw them particularly weird for a certain reason. So, Crab's disease. Um, why? Why? Okay, so he's not, he doesn't have any legs, and I kind of drew his, his claw hands weird. Why did I do that? Well, I'm trying to say there's something wrong with the extremities. In this case, it's peripheral neuropathy. And, um, and you might notice that his eyes are, are weird. Well, we'll get to that in a second. But something about Mr. Crab is that in the actual cartoon, his eyes are very big. Um, so if you're kind of those people that like to think in opposites, uh, his eyes are really big, but the thing that uh, kids present with a Crab's disease is going to be uh, optic atrophy. So um, you can think of it that way, or it's just the fact that his eyes are kind of above his head, out of really where the head is. Another way of, of indicating that eyes are missing. Um, so and now why did I draw his eyes like boobs? Because uh, that's what you're all were thinking when you first saw this image. Well, boobs, uh, we think of galactorrhea. Uh, galactorrhea and boobs, so why galactorrhea? Uh, boobs are on his head, so cerebrosidase, galacti galactocerebrosidase is the enzyme. So, um, and the buildup. So that's Crab's disease. 
And uh, moving right along, this one is sort of the horror-themed uh, uh, design, and it's, uh, it's Tay Sachs, or Tay Sucks, as in a vampire tries to suck your blood. Well, why, 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 what is up with this image? So let me show you. So um, this, uh, what's the physical uh, exam presentation? So you'll notice the red eyes on a vampire. I'm not sure which series, movies, any True Blood fans, Twilight fans, Interview with a Vampire, just the Count from Sesame Street. I don't know. Pick your favorite vampire. Anyway, red eyes. One of them's got to have red eyes. And uh, that's to represent the cherry red spots. And, um, and then, uh, you know, the, the kid is, is kind of, uh, he's trying to scare away this, his vampire, and, uh, he's holding, that's meant to be an onion, and you're like, well, why is the kid holding an onion against a vampire? It's not onions, it's garlic. Well, the kid's not exactly bright, and there is, uh, there is some, uh, de uh developmental delay in the, in the kids with tay -Sacks. So um, he's not that bright, and uh, he's 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 trying to scare away a vampire with uh, with an onion. But the onion also plays another role in that histologically lysosomes show onion skinning. So we're getting a two for one there. And now, what's why are they saying these things? Why did I draw the vampire so tall? So uh, the buildup in this disease uh, I made the vampire kind of tall with wavy arms, trying to signify he's gangly. And he's saying the number two, thing like the Sesame Street counting count there, and uh, so two, he's gangly. So the uh, buildup is GM2 gangliocide. So if you can at least remember there's a two in there and gangliocide, I think you'd be okay on the exam. And the kid is like trying to cast a spell, a hex. This is very Halloween themed. And um, why hex? Well, hex aminidase is the enzyme. So the kid's casting a hex, there's a vampire saying two, you got onions, he's not that bright. You got cherry red spots, so that's Tay Sachs disease. Um, all right, one more drawing, and this is we're getting okay. We're getting kind of abstract, and I apologize for that. But uh, this is a snowman. You're like, oh my gosh, why a snowman? So, a snowman is meant to represent with an egg on his head, metachromatic leukodystrophy. Now, I try to the leuko, the white part. That's I'm just trying to latch onto that word, a, a childhood figure that's like all white. It'd be a snowman. Kind of a thing, and uh, and 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 so how do they present? Well, they present with peripheral and central neuropathy, ataxia, and dementia. So um, a snowman can't move, it can't feel, it can't think, it really can't do anything. So that kind of fits that picture in my mind. Um, and the white just reminded me of leukodystrophy. And I put an egg on his head. Well, why an egg? And I meant to, this is like supposed to be like fumes coming out of the egg, like a rotten egg. And what's a rotten egg smell, or the chemical that, that kind of fits that? Uh, sulfur. So the, um, it's on his head again, so we've got cerebro again, but the, the buildup in this one is cerebricide uh, uh, sulfate. So you still got cerebral, so at least you can remember that. Cerebricide needs to be in the name, and an egg, so you think of sulfate. Um, the enzyme is aryl sulfatase, and uh, you know, it's still got sulfa in the name, so if you can think of the egg, I think that'll help you out there. It's uh, aryl sulfatase. For that, um, let's cover some other things. So I like the mnemonic in, in the Neiman pick one uh, as being a, Neiman uses his finger uh, to well they say pick his nose, but might as well double up and make it more useful. He uses his uh, finger to pick ch uh, cherries because uh, Neiman pick is kind of your combo disease. It's got kind of two aspects of Gauchers and two aspects of Tay Sachs. And what I think about it is that you got a from the tay sack side, you got cherry red spots and like this developmental delay thing going on. And on the, from the Goucher side, you got hepatosplenomegaly and something histologically to keep in track of. And so while Goucher's, it was that crumpled paper because it's grouch. Uh, here, um, you might think of a kid kind of blowing bubbles. Uh, Neiman, like a Neiman, he's picking cherries, he's blowing bubbles. I don't know, you got to remember foam cells somehow. But at least you know that there's some distinct histological finding that you could see in Neiman Pick. So, and if you got the sphingomyelinases uh, for that, then uh, you should you should be good. Um, uh, then the, the last one on the uh, on the sphingolipid sphingolipidoses the sphingolipidoses to remember is uh, the Fabrase, and um, this uh, this goes out to uh, uh, someone else gave me this <laughs> to remember, but uh, uh, Fabray is a gal. Um, 
Fabre is a gal is sort of the mnemonic that we're using. Fabre is a gal. Well, what, what can I use that for? Fabre is a gal. So, okay, she's a girl. Why am I thinking that? Well, this one's actually the only X-linked recessive of the sphingolipidoses. Um, and so you can remember it in that way. But you also get a two-for-one here again. Uh, Fabre is a gal. A gal, the enzyme, is alpha-galactosidase. Um, now you want to extend that a little bit longer. Fabre is a gal who likes to try ceramics. Try ceramics. Why is she trying ceramics? Uh, the buildup is ceramide trihexoside. So if you can think of it, there needs to be a tri in there, a ceramide, ceramide trihexoside, you should be good to go. Um, and then uh, the last two to cover are the uh, mucopolysaccharide hoses. And that's hurlers and hunters. I think it's pretty straightforward in uh, like first aid, at least how they cover it. Um, hurlers being the um, the gargoyalism, airway obstruction, the cataracts, and the uh, oh god, cataract. Oh no, no, it's not cataract. Sorry, corneal cl clouding. I'm not re-recording this. Corneal clouding, <laughs> and uh, and so uh, so pasmomegaly and all that jazz. Uh, the alpha L iteronidase and uh, heparin and dermatan sulfate. So you can see where the boards might try and trick you and put cere uh, cerebricide sulfate, heparin sulfate, dermatan sulfate, and maybe they, they want you to, you know, maybe the disease presented is metachromatic leukodystrophy. So you're gonna remember that snowman, the egg was on his head, it's on his head, it's gotta be a cerebricide, the cerebricide sulfate. Um, and, uh, and maybe distinguishing between, let's say in hunters, there's an iduronate, iduronate sulfatase, and you're like, oh, that's got sulfur in the enzyme name. Was that the metachromatic leuco? So the only way I could say is you can tie the iduronidase together. Those two, at least remember that. Or aryl sulfatase, air outside, the snowman's outside. However you want to remember that. But um, if you can keep pearls and hunters together and then remember the four images and the, the two other phrases, then I think we'll be uh, all together. So real recap. Uh, Goucher's was Oscar the Grouch, Crab's disease of Mr. Crab, Tay Sachs was the kid trying to take on the vampire, uh, Metachromatic Leukodystrophy was the snowman, uh, we got Neiman Picks, which is a combination of Goucher's and Tay Sachs, and then Fabre, Fabre is a gal, um, and then you just have the hunters and hurlers. And just, you know, think how, like, they could give you some kid with a patospinomegaly, maybe uh, even developmental disorders. So now the question is, well, did he have cherry red spots? Did he have gargoyalism? Um, was he angry, corneal clouding, um, so however you want to uh, look at that. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for listening, and I hope this helps, and that's it.